What's going on people, Ryan Williams AC here with your match preview. It is the big one, it is the North London Derby coming up this Sunday. Guys, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you like, share and subscribe. Of course, we are 110 now. Thanks again for the new subscribers. Again, the road to 150 continues by the end of March, guys. So if you're checking this video out for the very first time, please make sure you like and share and of course subscribe. So, Tottenham, 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 the old enemy, of course. Oh, dear. Let's look at it. Right now on the table, they are currently 7th. We are 10th. The last time we met, it wasn't so great. Of course, we all remember that bad, bad, bad performance where we lost 2-0 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We all remember Partey coming off injured. We remember the goals, thanks to Bellerin and Holding, and man, they, and in the second half, they just let, if anything, it just felt like pity. They just said, well, job done. Arsenal don't look like they're going to do anything. A lot has happened since. Tottenham have been up and down in form, and now they're really starting to pick up form. Um, seems like the likes of Gareth Bell is starting to really come into play as well. Harry Kane and Son, that duo is at ever so dangerous as well. Um, both teams winning their Europa League games as well. Um, last night, of course, Tottenham won 2-0 against Dan Azebreg. And, of course, Arsenal won 3-1 against Olympiacos. And, guys, of course, if you haven't checked that match reaction, click over and check out the previous video as well. So, yeah, a lot of bragging rights. I am a little bit nervous, as you can tell, on the way I am in this video. As you, I mean, Tottenham, let's face it, Kane always scores against us. Bale, who's been inconsistent, has started to pick up form. Son's a very good player, you know. And let's look at us. I mean, we've made so many mistakes. The Olympiacos game, we gave him a goal. The Burnley game, we gave him a goal. We have this mistake in us. Like I said to you guys last night, if you checked out the match reaction, we cannot afford any more mistakes. And Tottenham are going to be breathing down our necks, especially when it comes to playing out from the back, which Mikel Arteta has precisely said we are going to stick to it. And at times when it's worked, it's wonderful. But times like, you know, the Xhaka situation, the Sabaya situation, you know, it's been horrible. And we cannot afford to do this. If we've got any hope of trying to make up points in the table in the Premier League, then it has to start at this game. You know, let's be real. Tottenham, or I think, and it hurts me to say this, Tottenham are stronger than us. Let's be real. And it pains me to say that. But, you know, consistently levels, both teams are not exactly great. But Tottenham are higher on the table. I mean, boy, I want to beat them so bad. But, again, anything can happen. So, I don't know, guys. I'm going to put a pin um, question in the comment section for you guys as well. Um, what's your start at 11? And, of course, what is the scoreline prediction? So, make sure you check that out when you, you know, leave a comment on this video. So, let's get on with my team selection. Because... It's going to be an interesting one. For me, we have to play our strongest team. I know we got Olympiacos again in the second leg um, the next week coming up. But Tottenham. Tottenham, 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 Tottenham. Tottenham. It's so important. You know, we get the three points. All right. Their record at the Emirates is not great. But when they got Jose Mourinho by their side... And the way they've actually been scoring goals past teams this season, especially how the way they dealt with us at their backyard, it's going to be tough. It's going to be so, so tough. So, yeah, starting 11, Bert Leonard in goal. Cannot make any hesitations when playing playing out from the back. Clear the ball when needed, etc., etc., etc. Leno needs to be on his end game. Now, the right-back situation. For me, I'm going to go with Cedric purely because... I haven't forgot the way um, Son scored that wonder strike at the Tottenham's ground 
in the previous fixture where Bellerin just, I don't know what the hell he did with that. Although he did play well against Olympiacos last night, I think Cedric is a better defender. He might not be quicker like Bellerin, although he has a defensive attribute that Bellerin doesn't have. And although Cedric will be fresher of the two, so I'm going to stick with Cedric from here. Um, on the other flank, of course, Tierney on that left back row. I think Tierney is going to be key for us. There's one thing that I want Mikel Arteta to really, really look out for because I know this was last season. I'm not really going on this season with um, the, the left back situation. But if you remember last season, Mikel, um, Jose Mourinho figured out our outlet to Tierney and he managed to stop that out. And that's where Bamian was kind of not being able to get the ball from Kieran Tierney whilst he was playing out on the left. And he neutralised Tierney with, a pretty sure it was Sissoko. Guys, if you remember that game, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So, I think it's going to be very key on who we play for on, that, on that left with Kieran Tierney on the forward line. So, you know, that's something to think about. But Kieran Tierney, of course, he's the best left back at the club. You know, I wouldn't exactly play Cedric there. And Tierney is key for the way we play. So... That's why I obviously made that point. So, the centre-backs. Now, David Luiz would probably be an option to most people. And personally, I'm not going to pay Luiz. I think Luiz, you know, after that shaky, shaky moment against Olympiacos, I'm not so sure. He does have experience. He knows Jose well. Of course, he's been under Jose's management before in his time at Chelsea. However, I don't think it would be the right choice. I'm sticking with Pablo Mari. And I'm going to actually bring Gabriel into the side. I mean, he might be a little bit tired. But I feel Gabriel, you know, started the season up to the point where he had to come out the team due to COVID has been exceptional. And we saw bits of that. Last night, and especially when he got his goal to bring us back into the game. I feel him and Mary will be a very good combination. I think Mary definitely reads the game a lot better than most of the center backs that we have. He brings a calmness to the defense. And I think Gabriel, his physicalness, we're going to need that with the likes of Harry Kane, um, Anondon Bede if he plays, or Son, you know, Gareth Bell. We're going to need that physicality there in that center back role. So I think I'm going to go with Mary. And Gabriel as our centre-back partnership. Now let's move on to the central midfield area. Now, of course, I think Thomas Partey should start. And I think that was the only reason why he came off for the Olympiacos game last night. I know there's a few people scratching their heads and, you know, digging out their eyeballs on why. And some people that actually understand why. And I think this is the reason, yes, you know, he hasn't played much football since he's come back. He's been in its bats and maybe, but I mean, I would want 100% ready Thomas Partey than him staying on the pitch yesterday and actually potentially getting injured. Because I think there's a bold argument here. If Arteta let Partey stay on and he got injured, then you know what's going to happen. The forks are going to be out for Arteta as it is out. For some people, including myself at times. Anyways, and then, you know, if he did come off, you know, a lot of people did cuss. And of course, they did cuss because obviously his replacement, you know, with Leno caused the goal. So there's that situation there. So for me, Thomas Partey absolutely starts this game. I know he was rushed back for the previous fixture. However, you know, he's played a few games. He's got a few minutes under his belt. And I feel like this is a game for himself where I feel he needs some redemption. And, of course, after he came, I felt bad for when he came on. I mean, came on to start the game in the previous fixture. And, of course, we all know that Mikel Arteta situation where he kind of just pushed it back on the pitch, which was not cool anyways. You know, and eventually he did come off. But I feel we are a better... Better side when Thomas Partey is in that midfield. And we know Granit Xhaka is going to be there. So there's just no point saying Mohamed Al-Neni. 
even though Mohamed Alnelli scored an absolute wonder strike last night. I can't see Alnelli getting ahead of him. I can't even see Sabayas getting ahead of Xhaka. Xhaka's like the Iron Man for Arsenal and Mikel Arteta's eyes. As much as we all don't like it, that is what I see happening. Now, the front three, <laughs> that is also hard to predict. I mean, we've seen the likes of Willian, who's been kind of on a roll in the last four games, getting him four assists. You know, and those four games, we actually haven't dropped points or even lost the game, which is beneficial. Touch wood that, you know, we don't lose this game. But William has been very crucial in the last four games. We've seen Nicolas Pepe have spurts and a lot of us are kind of wondering why has he been dropped out, you know, for the for the, um, for the game yesterday, for the starting lineup. He did come on, didn't really do too much when he came on. I think the game was kind of settled. Even though him and Lacazette did try to attack as well as Smith Rowe, you know, nothing really happened in the end of that. You know, we saw Martin Odegaard get an absolute thunderbolt of a strike yesterday as well. Fantastic goal. And obviously, he was announced today the new Norwegian captain at a young age. So, congratulations to Martin Odegaard. And then you got Smith Rowe, who's just come back into the team as well. You know, he got a few minutes on. Didn't really look too shaky, of course. He had a muscle problem, which is why he was left up for a few games. So, and then, of course, you got Saka, you know, had a rusty game against Burnley yesterday. I wasn't too impressed with Saka again. So, hopefully, it's just, you know, he's a young kid. He's been impressive for us for the last two and a half seasons. So, you know, they, we have to be ready for a different form of Bakayo Saka. We have to take note of that. And also, Mr. Brazilian Gabriel Martinelli, of course, who hasn't really been getting much football as of late. There's been a lot of talk that Arteta's protecting him. There's a lot of talk that Arteta doesn't really favour him that much. There's a lot of reports out there. We don't know what to believe until we hear the facts. You know, what I believe, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I believe anymore. That, and that's just me being honest, guys. Whether he doesn't fancy him anymore, I mean, I don't know about that. But, you know, there's questions asked of why is he not playing him? So he can also count that he doesn't fancy him. But, hey, I don't know. But for me, we have to pick the best lineup and the best three as much as I want to see Gabriel Martinelli play and start this game with energy and high press. I, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. And we've got to trouble the likes of um, the Ben Davis or Dorothy or Aurier, you know, as their wing backs. Um, for me, the front three, and I'm going to say this with chest, Saka, Pepe, and I'm going to pick Emil smith Rowe. Now, you guys might be thinking, oh, why are you dropping Odegaard after one game? The only reason why I feel that is because maybe Odegaard might need a rest, but Emil smith Rowe has just come back. So, you know, you can chop and change, but I think, do you know what? No, 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 no. I'm not even going to pick Emil smith Rowe. I'm going to stick with Martin Odegaard. I think that's the wise decision. smith Rowe has only just come back. He's only just got a few minutes last night. I think Odegaard should play. I think we definitely need him there with his creativity and his passing acumen. Very high level. We know what he's capable of and of course there's been he hasn't really created and gotten an assist. So even you know his passing yesterday it was a little bit shaky, you know, at start, but he got into the game before he got taken off. Which is probably another reason why he got taken off as well. So I think Odegaard, Saka and Pepe for me, start, probably William will come in, but that's my team anyways. But up top. Now, what would you do up top? Again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, guys. Like I said, I'm going to leave a pinned comment. Lacazette or Bamiyang? Now, Lacazette, again, works very well with Pepe and Saka, uh, you know, Smith Rowe and Odegaard. You know what I mean? Lacazette does drop back into the midfield to help and he's... You know, he likes to hold up the ball, which helps with his physicalness. However, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, again, on the break, I don't think, you know, in good form, I don't think Tottenham can deal with him. I don't think they can, you know? So, I think I'm going to lean towards Lacazette, but I feel Aubameyang is going to play. But for me, 
if you're looking on goals, if you're looking on impact, I think I'm going to go with actually a Bamiyang, you know? And I feel, you know, as much as he hasn't been as great as he has been in the last few seasons since he's been here this season, surely, surely, surely he'll put up a good performance against this. So, guys, I'll give you my team lineup again. Leto and goal on the right hand side are going with Cedric. Uh, the centre backs are Gabriel and Mary. On the left hand side is Tierney. The midfield two in the pivot is Partey and Xhaka. In front of them is Saka, Odegaard and Pepe. And up top is Pierre Emmerich Abamian. Now here comes the hard part the scoreline prediction. Now, you know, it's very, very, very tough to go against Arsenal because Tottenham. We know what they can produce. You know, we've seen the amount of goals that Kane, Son and Bale have combined this season. And let's be honest, Bale is only just starting to turn up, you know. And there's a few other players that Tottenham have in their squad, which is like, mm, you know, don't exactly rule them out. But, you know, that, that three there can be a problem. But we can also be a problem to ourselves if we do not stamp out our mistakes. So for me, I'm going to be positive on the win. Not just because of the win. I just feel the players have to really step up their plate. And it's because it's Tottenham. I can't let it go. I'm going to go for a very close 2-1 victory. I think Tottenham, we can stop them. But also we need to stop ourselves from making the vital and crucial mistakes. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the Arsenal, of course. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section on this video. And of course, your scoreline prediction and your starting lineup. Again, I'll leave the pin question in there in the comment section. So I want to thank you all for checking out this video, of course. We're on the road to 150 subs by the end of March. Thanks to the new subscribers. We're currently on 110. And uh, Gunas, let's give it to Spurs this Sunday. Alright, 2-1, let's go. Alright guys, so have a good evening and yeah, let's hope Arsenal can deliver. Good evening, have a good evening guys.